and we're one minute, 10 seconds from resuming. The ground computers will hand over to the Ares 1X onboard flight computers at T minus 80 seconds. Standing by to pick up the count in 15 seconds. On my mark, time will be T minus four minutes and counting. Three, two, one, mark. T minus four minutes and counting. 11.30 is our launch time. T minus three minutes, 30 seconds, FTS SNA armed. T minus three minutes, 25 seconds, SRM ignition, SNA armed. That's the rain safety systems being armed. The vehicle will go to internal power at T minus one minute, 59 seconds. T minus three minutes, stand power secured. T minus two minutes, 15 seconds. T minus two minutes, vehicle going to internal power. Aries 1X now on its own power. Applying power to the DFI, the Development Flight Instrumentation. Flight data recorders are activated. Launch is enabled for the flight control system. T minus 90 seconds. And the handoff of the ground computers to the Ares 1X flight computer has occurred. T minus one minute. Sound suppression water system now armed. The solid rocket booster joint heaters are being turned off. And we're now go inertial. The navigation system is activated. Auxiliary power units have started. Solid rocket motor nozzle gimbal checks are underway. Ignition system is armed. Sound suppression water system is activated. 
T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And ignition and liftoff of Ares 1X. Testing concepts for the future of new rocket design. Altitude now two miles. Taper pressure now tapering off as designed. The vehicle is lining, aligned itself with the planned trajectory. We passed Mach 1 and we're now passing Max Q. We have our Max Q system ID maneuver PTI engaged. Solid motor chamber pressure picking up again. T plus 62 seconds. Now passing Mach 2. Vehicle now 10 miles altitude, downrange distance 8 miles, and a velocity of 1540 miles per hour. T plus 80 seconds, we've started our supersonic large amplitude ID maneuver PTI. We see the response. Started the last PTI maneuver, structural mode ID, and we passed T plus 105 seconds. Vehicle's now traveling Mach 4, 20 miles altitude, downrange distance 32 miles. The uh, SRM tail off is observed. Burnout. Our APUs have shut down, CRDs have shut down, BDM fire. And SEP. We show a SEP and a tumble motor ignition. We'll have a burnout orbit uh, parameter in just a second. These numbers were calculated right at burnout. The height of apogee, 21.92 nautical miles. And again, that's not peak altitude because the vehicle was still drifting up, but that is at burnout. Coming up on T plus 190 seconds. After vehicle separation, we have no guidance tele telemetry return. We're still looking at a good telemetry signal. And we can confirm the aeroshell, aeroshell separation. Our telemetry engineer, Mark Levine, making the telemetry calls, assisted by J.J. Joyner. Plus 235 seconds. Data quality of telemetry is still very good with the remaining TM channels. Not too much to report. The vehicle is uh, gently returning to Earth at the time. 
be expected under the parachute, and we were hoping for a, a visual confirmation from the downrange resources, but as of yet, we have not heard from our downrange resources. Next event on the vehicle is the severance of the nozzle to uh, minimize damage on water impact. Passing three plus T plus three hundred twenty five seconds. And at this time, we are LOS here at the uh, AE data station. We've had very good signal throughout the entire mission. We've just passed T plus 360 seconds. Uh, we should be under the main parachute at this time. And unfortunately, our antennas just uh, are not receiving the vehicle anymore. And we did have some brief video of uh, one of the chutes deploying. At this point, the vehicle should have landed in the ocean getting a report from our downrange resource. They have confirmed upper stage water impact. And again, that was the upper stage. And this is uh, Harry's 1X flight commentary. Uh, we're basically done with the uh, active part of the mission. Now it's recovery time, and we still have not heard uh, positive confirmation from the first for the first stage splashdown, but we expect it, it may have been missed uh, on our audio channel. And uh, just Let's think about what we just did. Our first flight test and the only thing we we're waiting on was weather that says you all did freaking fantastic so thank you very much see I'm, I'm gonna have uh, our uh, center director say a few words and then we have something to present and I know the folks in AE if someone can show up a, a finger if they can hear us a thumb us up if you can hear us out there Okay, well, maybe they can hear us, maybe not. But here's, uh, here's our center director. I, I can't tell you how proud I am of all of you. That was just unbelievable. It was spectacular. I got tears in my eyes. Uh, you know, all the naysayers, uh, that was just one of the most beautiful rocket launches I've ever seen. And when you consider three years ago this was a blank piece of paper, what this team has accomplished uh, across the NASA centers, a contractor, civil service team working together as one, it shows what we can do when we have a common goal, a common vision, and we all work together as one team. And I'm just so proud of each and every one of you. Outstanding job. It was really special. Thanks for everything you do. I, I just couldn't be more pleased. Thank you. Uh, Ed, before we hang a plaque, uh, I think you all know that uh, not only was it the first launch out of the Young Crippen uh, control room, but we have a new launch director in a very first launch. And there's a tradition that goes with that.
Yeah, y'all can come on in here. Not quarantine. All right, I, I, I would like the program manager for consolation to say a few words. Is it possible the AA for uh, exploration? Oh man, well, uh, how impressive is that? Uh, you all, uh, you all have uh, really accomplished. I think, uh, and I hope that it, you appreciate what that you've accomplished a, a great step forward for exploration.